Oh, shit, ain't no light right here. Oh, shit, we're going to do it like this. Barbershop conversations, man. Feel free, hit the subscribe button. So, just had dinner. We deliberated over Harrison, Charlo. What were your thoughts? Uh, very competitive fight. Uh, I, I would say uh, the fights I've seen, that was the fight of the year. Definitely fight of the year candidate. But um, it was a very good fight. I, I, had, I had the fight uh, even at the time of the uh, stoppage. But uh, Harrison, uh, hats off to him. He he, he fought a, a, a very good fight. I was surprised. I, that, that was the first time me actually seeing him uh, live in action and actually seeing one of his full fights. Like, he's more skilled than what I thought. Uh, Harrison was definitely winning the first half of the fight. He, he was a point in, he was, he, it was a point of the fight. He, he may have been up five rounds to two. Charlo start coming on because Harrison start. You can you can see Harrison was trying to reserve reserve himself, reserve his energies. Again, from being off a year, you know that's the effect of that. But uh, he made it a habit and you know starting off a slow early in the rounds, like seventh, eighth, nine. He was giving Charlo half the round and then he had come on. But he made he made it a habit and Charlo picked up on that. And each time he picked up, he got more aggressive. You know, it was like a one tempo, like Charlo read what he was doing. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And instead of fighting, going forward, pressing uh, Charlo forward, now Charlo was pressing him back, pushing mm -hmm. him back. And, you know, Charlo found the opportune time to land some big shots. He hurt him early, he shook it off, but, you know, he also came back late in the fight and, and, and hurt him and ultimately stopped him, you know. So, Hey, uh, hats off even more to uh, to Charlo for you know being two-time champion, and getting his belt back, and making true on his word, telling me gonna knock the knock the man out, which he did, you know. But hats off to both of those guys. You gotta respect both of them, man. Yes. Speaking of respect, I, I mean in the truest form. Even though like Harrison came up short, he still represented what he spoke of. Oh, no, you you know what I mean? He still, I mean, in my humble opinion. I, I, I thought he controlled the first half of the fight. I even said, what did I say? I said... Yeah, 7-3. It could have been 7-3. Man, this fight literally could have been 7-3 Harrison, depending on how you saw the fight. Yeah. You know, but I had it no bigger than even going into the 11-12 uh, yeah, uh, and 12 yeah. round. It had to be 85, whatever makes 90, it even. Whatever yeah, makes it even. Yeah, whatever makes like that, it even. Yeah. And because um, it was a knockdown, too, so I don't yeah, know what makes definitely. it even. But... Uh, um, I thought Harrison had a great game plan. Great game plan. But here's where it gets fishy with Harrison. Do he really trust himself? You know, mm -hmm. it, 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 it was a battle of mental, like, like uh, jeopardy in his head. Like, like, where is my energy? Where is my jab? What is... Uh, agility when should I use it I right, need to conserve right, right, he was playing right. like mental jeopardy in yeah, his head yeah, you know what yeah. I mean and and, and and I thought that's why he backed off yeah because he said I'm a back off six seven eight I know I'm at least I know it's at least three two right I know it's at least four two right. you know what I mean just based off of that excuse me he couldn't find success in his he couldn't find confidence in his successes mm -hmm. it was as if he was fighting off of at points he was fighting off of just pure instinct and being that he was probably the more complete fighter which I saw in a fight mm -hmm. he was more complete you know mm -hmm. he had more his, his, his skill his skill set was more uh, he had a more variety of skill sure, set sure. of skill so uh -huh. uh, he was more complete fighter and uh, but you know being off a year those who fought those who fight know this that you know your confidence is not quite there just like he said mm -hmm. You know, he started to feel those punches, you know, mm -hmm. later in the fight. That's why he said, in, you know, my, my my body, as I was taking those shots, my body just wasn't, you know, wasn't comfortable with mm -hmm. taking those big shots like that mm -hmm. because he'd been off a year, which yeah. is understandable. Mm -hmm. So that played some, that had a, like, play, play to his ment to some mental stress mm -hmm. on him. And, you know, which affected his game plan because he's, he was faulty. You know, his yeah. game plan became faulty. Again, he wasn't he couldn't sure, find sure. he couldn't find confidence mm -hmm. in, in his successes. Like uh -huh. he didn't know that that jab was as really that good. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? But sometimes you zone in and you zone out of fight, uh -huh. you know, in moments, at moments. 
and that's what happened. You know, going forward, he'll learn from it. You know, I, he's right there though. Like, oh like, man, he got he, he's, hell of an IQ. He's right there. He's right there in terms of opposition too. Like, he, like maybe him versus Brandon he, Adams. He's still he's he's still top three, top five. Easy top five in the welterweight division. I mean, uh, excuse, 154. me, one fifty four. Yeah, top five, man. He he's definitely uh, champion worthy. He he'll, he'll be back in uh, championship fights. Mm -hmm. You know, because I, I see a guy like that working, getting better, and improving. Mm -hmm. And right now, it's just a matter of, uh, you know, conditioning. Yeah. Conditioning and... See, one thing about when you condition, this is why Mayweather was so good. And he always was able to stay to a game plan precisely every second of the fight. Mayweather never... His game plan never slept. He never slept on his game plan because he was conditioned. And when you're conditioned... You're able to be uh, mentally with aptitude. Exactly. The aptitude. The aptitude. Your mental aptitude is always with you. It never, it never removes from. from it from, never from, drops. It, it never. never dro it, Even when you get tired, uh, your mental aptitude still remains at its apex. Yeah. Exactly. Thank yeah. you, Freddie. You uh -huh. said it a lot better than I did because uh -huh. I was stuck. Those are some great words no, I just no, put together. No, yeah. yeah. That, I was <laughs> wordplay. Wordplay. Hey. He agrees. Somebody goes writer. <laughs> He's one of these rappers goes writer. Uh, facts. 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 What up, P? Anyways, guys. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, conditioning. You know, uh -huh. that's what. It, well, once he get. Once he brings all all his tools together, and uh, he's done that for three or four months, and and he's built confidence within that, he'll be a champion again. And if they were to make a third fight after he, I want to see a third fight. Oh, I'm being he, honest. He deserves a third fight. And, and but they got to unify though. They got no. It, I was just about to say that. They got to unify. Excuse Maybe me. he can get a few other belts, and then they'll come back, and he'll be able to draw Charlo in because now Charlo feeling like. I don't have to fight you no more if I don't want to fight you. Sure. Because now I can always be an excuse for this is a business move. I don't have to fight you because of business. Because that's what boxing is about. Yeah. Oh, this, this, this is business. Mm -hmm. And that's, that, that's everybody's, uh, you know, uh, excuse when sure. they can, when they need one. Uh -huh. And you know, if he got, if he has a belt or two belts, they can use it as a, like yeah. you said, Fred, as a, as a unification belt. Because he'll he'll be back in a uh, in championship. Oh, talk. sure. He, for, He'll sure. definitely be back uh -huh. there. And and if they were to have a third fight in a year or so, or, you know, after, you know, there's been enough time for him to, to readjust to, to, to being back at championship level fight fighting, uh, I think he'll beat Charlo. Oh, he definitely can beat Charlo. Like, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He got to... He got to get to the ninth round. Like he, maybe yeah. he got to do his sparring yeah. after a six mile run. Yeah, definitely. Maybe he got to do sparring when he's uncomfortable. He got to wake up at two o'clock in the morning. He got to find something. There is something in him. Yeah. And you and I talked about it. I'm not gonna talk about it in, in this video, but there's something in him. And I want you guys to put it in the comment section what you guys may think it is. But there's something in him where. His eight-cylinder car just turns into a four-cylinder car. Yeah. I don't know how and where yeah. and how, but for an eight-round fight, he is one of the most intellectual, skilled fighters that we may have in this sport that we call boxing. And I don't know what it is, man. Heard figured it out. You know what I mean? Willie Nel Was it Willie Nelson that knocked him out? Figured it out. Mm -hmm. And now Chargo has figured it out, man. Because yeah. I've seen him come up and he... I, I, I thought the world of his potential and his actual talent that he has, but I don't know what it is, man. I I, I, I can't put my finger on it, man. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I even asked him in my last real, real long interview last year, a 10, 15 minute interview. I said, what is it, man? Like, I really, really don't know, but he, he had enough to win this fight. Man. He, he really right had there. enough to win this fight. He was right there, and, and that would have bought him enough time to get re to get readjusted to championship level fighting, mm -hmm. to where he could have held that belt for some time. Yeah, yeah, and, because he would have got a soft and, touch, maybe. And, like, and yeah, and and boxing needs that right now. And needs a character like him. They need him. You know, he's that guy. Like he's really that guy. Like he really is, you man. Know, and and he, he has the, the the persona to 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 bring the fans. Mm -hmm. You know. To, to a fight and yeah. um, you know possibly be a pay pay per view draw yeah. in, in some respect. He, you know? Boxing needs this man. Yeah, man. Boxing and, and needs I, this I, man. I, 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 at a high level, man. at a high level, he don't need to be at no motherfucking Mississippi nah, and fighting he, in these need small be, cars. He, he needs need to be a regular on, on, on a pay per view event. Yes, uh, you know, fighting in New York, fighting in Vegas, fighting in LA, 
he he, he got to have man that he, he's that guy man he is he's and, that guy he's and, definitely that dude and, and from watching him uh you know this might be a secret i don't know if he, it might be one of his real be, best kept secrets i believe you're left-handed just mm -hmm. how educated your left hand is I hope you're watching this video, Harrison. Or oh, he gonna watch it. His connects, man. Uh -huh. But I, I think he left handed. He got a hell of a left hand. Man. He has a great jab. God, a jab, left mm -hmm. hook to the body. Uh, shit, hook, hook to the top. Man, you got a hell of a left mm -hmm. hand. Edu man, that beautiful left hand, man. He's and a hell of a fighter, most man. Most guys like that are left handed fighters, but uh, uh -huh. you know, actually left hand, uh -huh. left hand dominant. You yeah. Know? Because his left hand was so beautiful and sharp. Uh -huh. You know. But damn, I hope, I hope you. I hope, I, 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 def I, I want him to be a phoenix. Uh, Sunday morning. Now with uh, Charlo, too, we got to talk yeah, about Charlo I, I was too. About to say that. Charlo, I was impressed with Charlo because he mentally could have went in a different direction in this fight. You yeah. know, like, yeah. like, like Harrison was mentally bullying the fuck out of this kid. Like, like he's like, oh, you going over there? Okay, yeah. I'm gonna just follow you over there. You know, I mean, throw a left hook to the body. You know, you know, just you know, just throw a right hand, hit you with a jab. And Charlo felt really uncomfortable. Yeah. I wish I could heard what Derrick James was telling him because whatever Derrick James was telling him really worked. Oh yeah, you definitely. know what I mean? Really, really worked tonight. The, the, the mark of a champion is being able to. One of the the the, the better marks of a champion is that you're able to uh, adjust. Yeah. You know, especially when you're adjusting to an uncomfortable setting. Yeah. Which. You know, Charlo, he's not used to, he's not accustomed to being in, a, uh, in an uncomfortable setting because usually he's such a dominant, you know, uh, he's such a, he's, he's the more dominant force in the fight, sure. you know. And uh, Harrison put him in a lot of uncomfortable positions. Mm -hmm. Like you said, Fred, he was mentally... Uh, Beating the, his ass, he was in my humble opinion. He was mentally the, the superior fighter. Yeah. And, and for a guy... For six rounds, for six for rounds. for a guy that have been at your head you know, leading up to the fight, which I thought Harrison was really in his head. And and, I, and I'm going to stand by that. So for him to be Well, able, well, you can tell because the first punch of the fight, he was Charlo trying to throw, he was trying to a big, was big hook. <laughs> yeah, he, he, yeah, was trying to, he was trying to, he was swinging yeah, for the fences already. Yeah, he was swinging already. for the fences. So, um, for him to be able to, to be uh, mentally, you know, dominated for mm -hmm. six rounds. Sometimes guys, after being dominated for six rounds, they tune out the fight. They just either yeah. get in survival mode yeah. or say, damn, I can't beat him. Uh -huh. They start being a one-trick pony. Uh -huh. Nah, man, this dude, he actually showed, you know, he has levels to mm -hmm. his adjustments as well. So, uh -huh. you know, I, I take my hat off to Charlo yeah, because sure. oh, he man. needed this challenge. This was a challenge this for him. This was a great challenge for him, and he accomplished it. In, 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 in every aspect, it was with a challenge. With flying colors, with man. flying colors. And, and, and with no, the knockout, he put it, the icing it, on the cake. It, it ain't no like maybe shoulda coulda woulda. This motherfucker said, you know what? I don't know where they at on these scorecards. I have no idea what the fuck is going on in these scorecards. And y'all motherfuckers didn't know either. I don't give a fuck what y'all say. Yeah, it was close. I don't know where these scorecards were. You could have had a seven three Charlo. You could have had a seven three Harrison. You could have had a five five. I don't know. I haven't even looked at it yet. But I'm, let me tell you this. This is breaking news. Jamel Charlo is no is not from Houston. This nigga is from Ghana. This nigga is in shape like a motherfucker. Right, and right, I, I right. said that the last yeah. fight. Go watch my last post fight. Bit. This nigga can go 20 rounds, dog. Nah, yeah, because he, he, he God, breath. You can damn. tell by the way he jumped on that rope at the end. Yeah. He, he was like, ah, he was rah, rah. Like, when you tired, you can't do that. Yeah. So, man, it was, it was amazing, man. Uh -huh. he, 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 for him to be have been able to do that, and lead us, he led us up in stages and steps. This nigga lives in high altitude to the, or something. To the gift, like he led His us house to must the be on the hill. Cause he oh, must, he's man. breathing, he's breathing some special oxygen. Oh man. His house gotta be on the hill at the top of a mountain. Because I, I'm being honest, like. He, he got oxygen. He, this he, motherfucker he is in. He breathing in pure oxygen. Real, you saw that rock? Yeah. Yeah, that nigga. Yeah. <laughs> we're, not, we're not even in Brooklyn, blue blood, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Long Island, nigga. Uh, Drew Titan in the Bronx. All these fucking rats running across us and shit. You yeah. know what I mean? But, uh, but, uh. Charlo did it. He, he, did, he did his thing, man. Uh -huh. he, he led it, he gradually led us to the promised land, you know, and gave yeah. us that knockout, uh -huh. you know. He put the icing on the cake because yeah. after six rounds, I said, I, I paid for a thousand dollars worth of entertainment. Yeah. After six rounds of fighting, yeah. that's how good and intrigued I was in the fight. Yeah. And for, for, for it to end in dramatic fashion like that, Facts. by Charlo, 
because it easily could have went that you know yeah. based on how what, what was uh -huh. actually happened easily could have went the other way charlo could have uh -huh. he could have crumbled you know but he, uh -huh. he rose to the occasion and showed yeah. that hey i'm really a champion man mm -hmm. and hats off to that brother man sure. Hopefully he continues to do amazing sure. things and yeah for continue. both of them right, right. but mm -hmm. I, I definitely would like i was i was harrison was my dog in the fight uh -huh. not to take nothing from charlo but I, I, you know, he and we done made a complete 180. We was on this side. I, I think we got more light in facing this way and shit. I don't know, man, but fuck <laughs> it. We trying to find the light, y'all. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> we got me going in circles. No homo. Pause. I know. I know he's a man. I'm saying I know. <laughs> fuck it. But anyways, man. Uh, uh, I forgot what I was about to say. Uh, oh yeah give these two men a standing ovation like yeah definitely like for real give these two motherfuckers a standing ovation and congrats to pbc i swear to god this is the first complete card oh, that i man. felt in a long time wow. from pbc yeah. like usually just like even deontay wilder fight this is probably the best on the card best, this card was the shit card of the year on any network this card was the shit we had one upset the leading candidate for the next big great heavyweight out of quote unquote america i know he's from africa by way of houston gets knocked down gets up off the canvas wins the fight in dramatic fashion tony harrison is up on the cards four two maybe going through six jamel charlo digs motherfucking houston deep and knocks this mother tko's this motherfucking in the 11th round yeah. you know hook with a hook he hooked with a hooker and he got caught, you yeah. know what I mean? And it's just that simple, man. You guys sparred before. You know what happens when you hook, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. You, 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 your biomechanics naturally brings down your right hand to generate inertia, you know what I mean? And that's, and that's what, especially when you want to generate power, because you're probably coming from a crouching position, you know? Yeah. You know, so, so, but man, great card, man. Lots of fun. Uh, we went and had dinner at Panda Inn, man. We had a great good time. Food. Yeah, well, good food, great time, great people. Uh, and uh, that's what it is, man. L underscore Supreme 88. L underscore Supreme 88. Y your favorite trainer, favorite trainer. That sounds bad. That sounds way cool, man. Cause I, you know, I've been fucking it up the last. We ain't did a video in a minute, neither, nigga. You true, know what I mean? True. So, so go subscribe too. We should have said this at the beginning of the video. We got to keep on saying that. Round table talk. Thanks, round thanks, table thanks. talk. Round table talk. Come on in, everybody. Oh, what's your tagline? What you say? Grab a chair. <laughs> Chime in. That shit sounds stupid as a motherfucker. <laughs> but anyways, man, uh, all love, man. And uh, yeah, man, and don't forget, Sunday to Thursday, I should have said this at the beginning of the video, Sunday to Thursday, 9 p.m., we, we going in. I haven't seen the Earl Spence interview yet. I'm going to go watch it. I'm going to go charge the car, do all that shit. I'm going to go watch it tonight, so I'll have my review probably in the morning or something like that. And uh, I saw Earl from a distance tonight. Look good, man. Took tons of pictures with fans, hung out. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Look good, Very positive nice, energy. Man. You look like the same Earl Spence, but I was sitting in the hundred section, so I didn't. Uh, so I was like, how far away from it was? It like eighty feet? Possibly. Yeah. Probably about eighty feet away from us. You know what I mean? So I, did, so I didn't see him up close, but uh, uh, I was gonna go to the hotel and say what's up to him, but I just wanted to hang out with my brothers and and have and, and eat. So that's what we did. So anyways, man, barbershop conversation and. Round table talk. Round table. Another rap. Did you see that shit? Anyways, man, we got to get the fuck out of here because they think we cheese in this motherfucker. <laughs> Barbershop conversations, man. Feel free to subscribe button. Talk to y'all motherfuckers soon. Peace.